Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Since the interest in my Windows on ARM video was so high, I thought about revisiting the topic. Last time we tried it using a Lumia 950XL from 2015. It worked, but the performance just wasn't there. Now let's give Windows 11 on ARM a fair chance with this, the Xiaomi Pocophone F1. It released in 2018 and features a Full HD IPS panel compared to the Quad HD OLED panel on the Lumia, which is definitely better. But it has a Snapdragon 845, which is way faster than the Snapdragon 810 that we have in the Lumia. This also brings the Adreno 630 GPU in comparison to the 430 on the Lumia. And we also went from 32 gigabytes of storage and 3 gigabytes of memory on the Lumia to 64 gigabytes of storage and 6 gigabytes of RAM on the Pocophone. This means we actually don't need to install Tiny11 or something, we can actually install the full-blown version of Windows 11 and it runs very well. The biggest difference, however, between the Lumia and the Poco is how easy the installation was. For the Lumia 950, I basically just had to run the installer provided by the Lumia Windows on ARM project. Installing Windows 11 on the Poco phone is quite a bit more involved. This device and many, many others are maintained by the Renegade project, the link to which is in the description. They have a great and actively maintained tutorial for the supported phones, so I won't cover the installation process here but be ready to do stuff in a command line. Manually repartition your phone, create and flash images, search for compatible drivers and so on. The process is doable, but is way harder than the 950XL. So now let's see how it works. For the Pocophone F1, the CPU and GPU are actually fully working. The touch screen, as long as you don't lock the phone, the camera is sadly not working. Mobile networks should be working, but for me at least, they aren't. Sensors don't seem to work and sadly HDMI out also not. But a powered USB hub like this one can be used. So we can connect peripherals to it, just no displays. But all these problems are actually not that bad. Since as you could just see, we can actually dual boot Android and Windows on here, which is absolutely crazy that you can do that. So if you want to take a phone call or make a photo, just boot into Android. If you want to run Windows software, just boot into Windows. Another problem I forgot to mention is, this phone has an SD card slot, but sadly it is not recognized within Windows, which is a bit of a problem. Alright, so now I assembled my setup. As you can see, it consists of a ridiculous amount of adapters. First off, we start at the phone. USB-C into a USB-C dock. From there, I use a USB-A to USB-C cable into a USB M.2 adapter. On here is a 512 GB M.2 SSD and a heatsink. This USB 3 port goes to a USB 3 hub that also has an ethernet port for internet. I also plugged in my mouse and keyboard dongle here and because this build of Windows does not have sound on the Pocophone, I also added a USB-C audio adapter from a Google Pixel and a USB-C to USB-A adapter and a cheap battery powered speaker at the end. Oh, and there's also the charging cable from the Steam Deck to power the whole thing. Now I filled this SSD with the games and benchmarks so we can really test this build of Windows out. What I also did was reduce the resolution because this phone has a notch here and rounded corners and some UI elements they would just be hidden by that. So I reduced the resolution to a 16 by 9 image which has no obstructions. Since this did not work last time, I would say let's start with Minecraft. And this is not the Bedrock Edition, which also works on the Switch and Android. This is the full Java version. I added Optifine and Forge to this to get a bit more performance. Other than that, 
It's just Minecraft 1.19.4. Okay, and we're in. As you can see, the game runs very smooth. If we open up the debug text, we can see it's 34 FPS right now. And this is actually really playable. Yeah, I mean, you get the idea. Minecraft actually works really well. Okay, so let's answer the age-old question, does it run Crisis? This is the Crisis pre-release demo from 2007 and it did not run on the Lumia 950. So let's see if it runs here. Okay, so from this first scene, it actually looks very playable. Okay, apparently it's only 12 FPS, but it feels way smoother. I'm not sure if Fraps even actually understands the GPU that we are using here. Okay, Crisis worked. And it worked better than I expected. Next up, why not try some Tomb Raider from 2013? Okay, let's load my last autosave. Damn! <laughs> I mean, the fact that a game like this runs on a phone, that's just amazing. Ah, uh, here there were a few frame drops. Okay, let's test something else. How about CSGO? Okay, since the SSD decided to overheat while loading CSGO, I added a computer fan here. So let's try it again. Okay, let's see how it works. Do not be afraid. Let's go. Not great. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah, so that's probably like 10, 15 FPS. Not great. Okay, so now how about some GTA 4? Yeah, that's the jam. Okay, that works way better than I thought. I mean, this is a PS3 game, you have to remember that. And it runs on a mobile phone. <laughs> crazy. Absolutely crazy. Okay, so yeah, this worked way better than I had thought. GTA 4 on mobile. Okay, we have seen GTA 4, now let's try GTA 5. <laughs> it actually works. It actually works. <laughs> but it's like 2 frames per second. <laughs> yeah, this is completely unplayable. But you have to keep in mind that this was the cheapest supported phone. So maybe with a newer phone, this would actually be playable. Can I get Michael to the car is the question. Maybe in 10 years. Yeah, I think we can, we can uh, stop that. But at least it runs. Okay, so for the last game I wanna test, I expanded my setup a little bit. So now I have a DVD drive and a computer power supply over there. And we're trying to play Need for Speed Underground on here, from the original discs. It already installed correctly, so let's see if it runs. I connected the uh, DVD drive using USB. You can't see it, but it's connected to this USB hub, and then to this USB hub and to the phone. Here it is. Challenge 
<laughs> it works. It actually works. I already installed the widescreen fix. Yeah, that looks... Oh man. I love this game, man. Yeah, as you can see, I installed the extra options for some tweaks and also widescreen fix. Let's start a quick race. Damn, I can't believe it. Like, one of my favorite games of all time running on a phone. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> unbelievable. Really unbelievable that this actually works. So let's do some benchmarks. What I really want to compare is how the performance is between the Pocophone F1 and the Lumia 950XL from the last video. I also want to compare these two ARM CPUs to x86 CPUs found in devices of similar size like the GPD Pocket 2 and GPD Pocket 1. So sadly I couldn't find any benchmarks that support the Adreno GPU found in these two phones and also supports the Intel integrated GPUs from the GPD Pocket. But as we have seen with gaming, we can say that the performance on the Pocophone F1 is really on par, if not even better, than the GPD Pocket 2. For CPU, I actually found a benchmark that ran on all of them, Cinebench. I mean, <laughs> not on all of them, sadly it always crashes on the old Lumia, but I mean, it's pretty clear that the CPU in the Lumia 950 is way worse than in the Pocophone F1. On all the other devices, I got results. And they are quite interesting actually, if you consider that the Pocophone F1 has to run these benchmarks through an emulation layer. So first of all, I tested the GPD Pocket 1 here and received a respectable 720 multi-core and 171 single core. For the Pocket 2, I got a 1163 multi-core and 653 single core. So quite a lot better than the Pocket 1. But now comes the interesting part. The results from the Pocophone F1 were 1060 multi-core, so about as fast as the GPD Pocket 2 that can run the code natively and doesn't have to go through emulation, but the single core was a bit lower, so around the level of the GPD Pocket 1. But you have to keep in mind that this is a phone and it's still considerably smaller than these two mini PCs. So I'm really impressed with these results. While installing Windows on the Lumia 950XL was kind of a fun project, but not really viable because you couldn't really do much besides like normal office type work. This generation here, like the Snapdragon 845 or 55 um, using Renegade project, you actually get a very usable computer in your pocket. And the crazy thing is, the, the absolutely mind-blowing thing is, even with stuff like the camera not working or the SIM card not working, I can just shut this down and boot Android, as you can see. And as you can see, we are in Android. I can just reboot to Android and use it as a normal phone. So yeah, that's it. We have seen a full version of Windows 11, not Tiny 11, running on a phone and working surprisingly well. We got a few modern or semi-modern games running on it, even one from a freaking DVD, which is just mind-blowing to me. And the performance on this was absolutely astonishing. The fact that we had GTA 4 running playable on this phone. A game where I had to purchase a new PC when it came out back in the day. That's just mind-blowing to me. And the other thing you have to keep in mind is that this phone was the cheapest Snapdragon 845 phone 
that is supported by the Renegade project. The Renegade project also supports, for example, the OnePlus 7T Pro McLaren edition with 12GB of RAM and a Snapdragon 855 CPU. So using that phone you might even be able to play GTA 5 on here. I definitely want to try this with a even newer and better smartphone in the future, so stay tuned for that. Okay, then I hope you liked my look at Windows 11 on ARM on a phone. If you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing, give a thumbs up and I'll see you next time.